College Football Live is brought to you by Madden NFL 17. Take your team all the way. Rated E for everyone. Everybody's talking about what if Baylor runs the table uh, and, and ends up being undefeated after everything they went through in the offseason. Boy, that would be turmoil for the committee. The committee made it very, very clear to athletic directors and head coaches that non-conference scheduling is a big part, at least the intent of non-conference scheduling will help you and your cause. You're almost better to play a tough team and lose a tough game than play a bunch of nobodies. And Baylor and their former head coach took a lot of pride in saying, we dare you to keep us out if we win all of our games. But where's Baylor going to get a quality win? Look at the rest of their schedule and what's happened to the Big 12 right now. When's a quality win going to happen for them while these other teams are definitely going to be stacking up quality wins throughout the next eight weeks? Baylor's next three games all come against teams that have struggled this year. Kansas, Texas, and TCU. They may get a chance at that marquee win November 12th when they play OU and Norman. However, I don't really know how marquee that will be at the time. So, Booger, will Baylor's non-conference schedule end up helping them or hurting them when it comes to their playoff chances? Well, I think it makes their margins for error very slim. You know, Sam, last week I went to Dallas for the mock uh, college football playoff selection show. And that's one of the things that came up, Baylor's non-conference schedule or lack thereof. And the college football committee definitely frowned upon that, saying that, you know, they wanted you to play tougher competition. But let me tell you this. The Big 12 is the fourth-ranked conference in the country, fourth among the Power Five. And you can't tell me that a Baylor team that goes undefeated, regardless of how soft the non-conference schedule is, regardless of the passes that they play, if Baylor goes undefeated in the fourth-ranked conference in the country, you mean to tell me they're not going to go to the college football playoff? I find it very, very hard to believe, regardless of how soft that schedule is. Well, here's my question, though, Booger. So what if we get the scenario, and Paul, this is for you too, where we have Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State, and there is one spot left, and you have an undefeated UW and an undefeated Baylor. You still saying Baylor gets in there? Well, I, I think you have to cross that road at that point based on the well, rankings. I'm asking that, you to cross it right well, now. <laughs> well, based on, based, based on the rankings that just came out, the Big 12 is rated higher than the Pac-12. And I understand there's going to be another data point for Washington in the Pac-12 championship game if they win that. But if the Big 12 is ranked higher than the Pac-12, when it comes to conference champions, then Baylor should get another notch above Washington if they're the Big 12 champions. So that's kind of the way I see that. You know, Booker, you, agree, you just... No, I don't. Uh, the championship game, I think, is going to be the salvation for UW because their non-conference wasn't all that great either. But look at what Baylor has done. They started the season against Northwestern State. They played SMU and Rice. Combined, 3-13. and 13. Baylor's non-conference is a total disgrace. Uh, there's total disregard for what the committee has asked them to do. And, and I, I frankly might leave them out, uh, depending on the circumstances, but, uh, because is that fair? Uh, you're, you're putting that up against Clemson, perhaps with a loss, uh, going to Auburn, or, or you have Alabama playing Southern Cal, and all these other, uh, Ohio State uh, and, and Oklahoma. I mean, they're, they're not even comparable. I mean, Baylor, go on the road and play someone important versus uh, a bunch of nobodies, and, 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 and then we'll talk about you. But right now, I, I'm not impressed with anything I've seen from Baylor. And I don't, first of all, I don't think they're going to run the table, but if they, they do, they have, not only do they have that against them, they have the stench of the scandal, which should have nothing to do with this, but it's hard to wipe that away. Yeah, Paul, to your point, I, I definitely understand what you're saying about their strength of schedule. The only thing I'll say to that, Paul, is you have to go back and look at the strength of the conferences. And if, if the okay. Big 12 is stronger than the Pac-12 and you win the Big 12, to me, you should get credit for winning the stronger conference. Just like we always talk about the SEC. Sure. If the SEC is so strong and you win the SEC, don't you get a little benefit of the doubt for winning that conference? So why can't you get it for the Big 12? Well, the one thing I will say, since they, they do play uh, a nine-game conference schedule, they, that, that is one advantage for Baylor, but not having the conference game is, is an attraction. I, I, th I think what Sam said is the real interesting debate, though, if it comes down between Baylor and UW. Uh, but UW has higher-profile games, yeah. I think, and I think that's going to – and that, that last game, while Baylor's sitting at home – actually, they may be playing that weekend. I take that back. Uh, I think they will get ignored. 
But see, here's what I don't understand, Paul, because everyone talks about the, the Pac-12 and, oh, maybe the Pac-12 is down this year. Where's the easy win for UW? I mean, they've been dominating no, teams have that have been beating other teams. Like, the Pac-12 top to bottom this year. There is no just easy win that you know that's almost like a bye week. And you do have that in the Big 12 right now. Yeah, yeah, but, Sam, if, if you look at Washington's non-conference schedule, Rutgers, Idaho, and Portland State, I mean, give me a break. I mean, <laughs> yeah, are, are, Rutgers a big are we talking about world beaters here? No, but when they scheduled Rutgers, I mean, I, look, I don't know exactly how it works. I just know these games are scheduled years in advance. Rutgers wasn't just a gimme game. I mean, Rutgers has been good. So it's hard for scheduling purposes to know who's going to be good. I mean, if somebody would have scheduled Houston in their non-conference yeah. This year, that would have they probably would have thought, you know what, that's going to be a, a pretty yeah. easy win if you scheduled that years ago. Well, so I, it's, I, it's tough to do. I definitely understand that, Sam, but when we think about Rutgers, Rutgers got beat 150 to nothing or something <laughs> the last two weeks. So let's not act like Rutgers is really a juggernaut. Come on, let's not, let's not play America like they didn't watch Rutgers lose 78 to nothing to Michigan, okay? <laughs> no, I agree with you that right now Rutgers is not good. I'm just saying for these ADs that do the scheduling, right. it's hard Correct. to know who's going to be good four or five years down the road. That's all I'm saying. I, I truly understand, but as, as far as it pertains to this college football playoff, we're talking about Rutgers right now. <laughs> okay, okay, I, I'll, I'll give you that. When we come back, one of these guys says that Brian Kelly will not be coaching Notre Dame in 2017. It's 